This is Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Hidden Church, created by user Blockbeer25. April, Monday. This is my first journal after a stupid rambling about Holly's disappearance in the last one. I'm hoping I can start fresh now for high school. Today at school, we learned about the Jonestown Massacre. To be honest, I'm so glad I sent them back because it was so boring, like most lectures in history class. So because of that, I was able to sleep through most of the lecture. Tuesday. Ugh. I don't really like my family. I'm so sick of my mom neglecting me, and my dad forces me to act like someone that isn't me. Manny's the golden child, and Roderick has his band. But me? All I have is Rowley. Rowley? He seriously needs to grow up. It feels like I'm babysitting for him, if anything. I swear. If I'm forced to play hide and seek with him one more time, I'm giving him a piece of my mind. We're freshmen, we should start acting like it. Wednesday, I finally decided to hang out with some older kids at my school. At lunch, I sat by some seniors, but all of them left to sit somewhere else except this one guy named Colin Ergates. He's actually pretty nice and turns out we have a lot in common. Crappy family, trying to find new friends, all of that. I even got some of his contacts after that. It's nice knowing I'm friends with a senior now. Thursday. I've been talking to Colin more than ever, and he's a pretty cool guy. I ranted more about my family, and he brought up this place called Milkwa. Apparently, this place helped Colin get out of a dark place in his life. Milkwa is a bit farther away from Plainview, but that's not really an issue. But Colin reminded me that my family sucks, and they probably wouldn't care that I vanished. Eventually, we made a plan to run off to Milkwa. I'm going to sneak out of my house around 2am and then meet up with Colin at a local gas station. Then we drive off, and I'll have a hopefully better life. Saturday. Today I snuck out of my house around 2am as stated earlier here. I heard odd noises from my parents room and one of them didn't sound like my dad, but whatever, that's not the point here. I finally got to the gas station and there was Colin waiting in his car for me. Colin told me that it was going to be a bit of a drive so it was okay that I went back to sleep. So I did. I woke up to a small village in the mountains. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, a little more, but I guess I can judge a book by its cover. Colin told me to stay in the car for a while so he could handle some business. Minutes pass and I start thinking about texting someone like Roderick to know where I am, but before I can get my phone, Colin comes back. He tells me that I'm going to be living under his house for a little bit until I age up. It doesn't seem too bad for me, better than Rowley of course. When I got to Colin's small house, at first I wasn't impressed. Maybe it's because I just live with more people, but then he showed me a room that was just for me. It's something to be the same size as my room, but that isn't saying much as my room isn't very big and no one pays attention to me because I'm the middle child. Sunday. It was early in the morning and everyone in Milkwa was required to go to the chapel. I was assuming it would be like normal church, but in reality, that wasn't the case. I met the leader of this church. His name is Trevor Ohipo. Trevor allowed me to go to the stage and introduce myself to the rest of the church. It was intimidating at first, but then I realized, when I become famous one day, I'll have to deal with crowds like this every day. This is just practice. My name is Greg Hefley. I'm from Plainview, but I'm very glad to be a part of this church. Everyone? cheered. It was euphoric. I can't remember the last time I felt this good in my life. In fact, it felt so good, I think that the feeling lasted throughout the rest of the sermon. I think the whole thing lasted for the whole day, because by the time we were done, it was dark out and everyone was heading to bed. And to be honest, I'm getting tired as well. I'm too tired to call anyone, so I'll just wait and hope I'll remember to do it tomorrow. Roderick, um, where have you been, man? Dad thinks I did something to you, which isn't true at all. I'm, I'm trying my hardest to look for you all over town, but I still can't find you. Please, Greg, I'm worried about you. Just give me a sign that you're safe. The world can be a dangerous and freaky place at times. It is done. Monday. Milkwa has its high school and it's pretty different from Plainview High School. Everyone is more welcoming here, and to be honest, I quite like it. Also, big surprise, I found Holly here! I know someone would tell me to help her, but in reality, Milkwa is a nice place. I can see why she stayed here instead. June. So it's been a little bit since I wrote in here. I've been devoting my time to the church and all. I'm now a comic artist for the town's newsletter. 
Sometimes it burns me out, but it's worth seeing and hearing praise from others. Oh, speaking of the church, I should probably explain what it is. The church is called the Hidden Church Awaiting God's Word, or HCAGW for short. We believe for 1,930 years, God has been silent, just like in the Bible where people waited 400 years. Obviously, we have been waiting much longer. And hope God comes back and says something to us, we can react to stories from scripture. Example would be what happened a few days ago. Some members sinned and were thrown off a boat called Noah's Ark. I was shocked as well, but Trevor justified everything by explaining that people overthrown were thieves and stole money that was for the church. I asked Trevor if this was all necessary, and he said, It's simply a cry to our father that neglects us. Father, I found a peculiar page in Greg's diary. It was about Jonestown. Well then, burn it. Good. He won't remember. Colin, come. Have a seat. I personally congratulate you. I'm impressed on your influence on Greg. Wait, really? Why, of course. My judgment is truth, after all. Thank you. Keep it up, Colin. Keep that boy working to the bone. Can't escape yet. There's a new member coming our way. Was told Greg knew this one. His name? Rowley Jefferson. Tuesday. I started talking to Holly more, and she seems a lot more devoted to the church than I am. She can only talk about how great the church, Trevor is, and hopes God will contact us again. It was a little startling to me, but maybe this is a sign from God to devote more time to the church and my own faith. From now on, I'm going to start writing prayers in this thing. Dear God, thank you for giving me a sign to devote more of my time to you. Please give me a blessing. Amen. Wednesday. We have a new member today. It's Rowley out of all people. The way he was introduced to the church was just like my introduction. Rowley isn't special like me, right? I'm not just some grain in the sand. Is Rowley here to prey on me? Colin told me to be welcoming as possible, but I said I didn't want to as I didn't even like him anymore. That's when Colin said this in my ear. Don't let your sinful thoughts stop the church. You and I know God wouldn't want that. Maybe that was a bit much, but hey, it spooked me to follow orders. Dear God, please tell me I'm special. I'm not just some grain in the sand, right? I know I have a purpose in life. Please, show me. I'm begging you. Amen. Thursday. Rowley told me that all this church stuff isn't getting to him. He says that Joshi says to think for yourself, and no one else in the church is doing that. I told him that was a bunch of bullcrap, and this church has done more for me than anything or one back in plain view. So, he had to let go of everything in his previous life and move on to this new and better life. I vented my frustrations to Colin, and he just told me to do better, or else, dear God. I need your wisdom to handle Rowley. He is getting on my nerves. Colin wants me to do better, and I know this church is counting on me to do something about it. So help me, God. Amen. Friday. Food is scarce again. It was only one scrambled egg and rice. But Holly was saying how good the food was. It gave me some reassurance. Of course, Rowley was very fond of this. I was going to say something, but there's an announcement on the speakers saying there's another reenactment ritual happening at the local lake. Looks like in this reenactment ritual, they were throwing baby boys in the river to drown them. For some reason, one of the boys looked like Manny. I'm not sure why I'm so disturbed by this. I hated Manny. I was told that this was a spiritual awakening of some sort, and my body's just a little freaked out about it. I hope that's true. I am pretty upset still. Dear God. I'm really confused, Father. I think I saw my little brother at the reenactment ritual, but I'm not sure why I feel upset about it. I, I never liked Manny, but I still feel disturbed. Is there something wrong with me? Please help me. Amen. Saturday. Riley is still upset about what happened yesterday. I would talk to him, but I think he's had enough with me. But thankfully, Trevor came up to us and wanted to talk to Riley in private. I'm hoping Trevor can talk some sense into him. I'm just saying, throwing babies into rivers isn't right. Josh, you wouldn't want that. But here's the thing, Rowley. There are many false prophets out there. 
Joshi is one of them. And those children, they were fated to die young. Just like the disciples of Jesus and how many of them died for him. They were fated to die. Just like those children. It's all part of God's plan. Sunday. I had trouble sleeping today and I heard Colin sneak out of the house. In curiosity, I followed him. He walked to this house that looks a lot better than the one we currently live in. So I hid and sat near a window that just so happened to be barely open. I could hear everything that was happening, but I regret hearing everything. From what I could get, Trevor was really mad at Colin. He was saying that he failed me because I failed Rowley. For starters, I don't remember being tasked to preach to Rowley, but that's besides the point. That's when I heard a slap from the window, leading to a thud. I peeked and by the looks of it, Trevor wasn't having it with Colin. Colin tried to defend himself by saying he did everything he could, but I guess that didn't do anything as he got another slap to the face again. Trevor then said that Colin has been here for three years. He can at least do a proper favor for the church. Then I saw Colin tear for the first time saying he'll do better. Trevor calms down a little bit and says, you better, you better, or it's Moses of snakes. After that, I quietly followed Colin back to our house. When we got back, all I could hear was his crying. It kind of got out of my nerves after a while. I'm not sure if it's because of the crying or this was the first time I've seen Trevor really mad. Dear God, this one's going to be short as I'm getting tired, but I'm scared right now. Colin's crying isn't helping either. Give me courage, Father. Amen. It's morning now and everyone was called to search for Rowley. My guess is that they try to run away. Of course, Trevor told me and some other members to look for him. Rally! I went deeper into the forest and I just so happened to find the shoe punctured to some spikes. I took one sniff of it and, yeah, it's definitely belonged to Rowley. I alerted the rest of the church and Trevor, and oh boy, Trevor was not happy about this. He didn't hate me, thankfully, if anything. Things went back to normal after that. Although, I did hear rumors of an upcoming mass suicide? Why does that sound so familiar? Dear God, Rowley ran off today. Please, God, don't let him snitch on us. I'm trying so hard to do better, and I don't want some scum to ruin it for me. Amen. Tuesday. Trevor was somehow able to get Rowley back to the police, but something about him felt off. Like, he was filled with paranoia in his sermons. I tell you, my followers, the media and public are now after us. It's the devil's work, I tell ya. Dear God, our leader is filled with paranoia, and frankly, he's doing the same to me. Help me, God, to calm down and think rationally. Same goes for our leader. Please give us wisdom. Amen. Wednesday. A journalism group called The Scary came here today. Probably because Riley snitched or whatever. Trevor freaked out even more and told me, Holly, Colin, and some other HCAGW members to shoot these guys down. But something or someone stopped me. It was my dad. My dad works as a journalist for Iscariot. Turns out, he was as shocked as I was because the first thing he did was run up and hug me. I was so confused. I've never seen my dad this affectionate before. He told me that we needed to get out of here. That's when Holly shot him in the back. <laughs> You're not leaving this church, Greg. I was terrified at first, but after that, Holly calmed me down. Or at least tried to. I played with cool until the other journalists were dealt with. After that, I think something in me is starting to snap. I saw my little brother drown and my dad get shot. I'm, I'm actually scared now. Dear God, I'm so scared. My own father just got shot. I know I hated him, but this time I'm, I'm really upset. Please come for me, God. I don't know if anyone else will. Amen. Thursday, we were all called to the chapel this morning. Riley was on stage with Trevor and Colin. Riley kept getting called Judas because he betrayed us. Trevor said that Riley, or I guess Judas in this case, would be hanged. The rest of the church cheered on for his execution, and it, it happened. All I did was stare at his hanging body. After a while, it was all starting to click in my head. This place, this place is a nightmare. I'm starting to understand why Riley tried to run away. Saturday, I did it. I did what Riley did and I ran away. But I was more successful because I knew about the spikes. I thought I was going to lose my sense of direction while well in the woods, but thankfully someone found a nearby town. I asked for the direction to the closest police station and got there as fast as I could. <laughs> I'm guessing another kid from the same place reporting similar things finally convinced the police to investigate the church. As we got there, we were too late. There were dead bodies everywhere, but they were all dressed in bright color. It's like if you were to pluck a bed of flowers. The flowers are dead, but the colors are still there. And no, 
I'm not gonna draw that. Just revisiting the imagery is messing with my head. While trying to ignore the haunting silence, I looked around with the police to see what the cause of all this was. Right then, I saw a large tub of juice, I think. Oh my god. It just clicked in my head. Trevor probably wanted to do what Jim's Joan did. Drink the Kool-Aid. Why? I really don't know. But what I do know is that I couldn't find Colin or Holly in the sea of bodies. Although, I probably didn't look hard enough. I mean, who wants to look at a bunch of bodies all day? Monday. Well, it's been about a year since I ran this thing. I had wrist problems because the cult made me overwork almost every day. I live with my mom and two brothers. Yeah, Manny's actually still alive. I guess what I saw a while back was just me saying things. <laughs> Although, it is getting annoying that journalist groups are trying to interview me about the HCAGW. Like, can't you all leave me alone? I really prefer not to talk about the most traumatizing thing in my life so far. Maybe I'll just give them the stupid journal. Greg, did Trevor abuse you? Did he force you to drink the Kool-Aid? You know what? Just take my journal. It'll answer your arrogant questions. One time, I visited the memorial for all the members of the cult who died, and it really hit hard seeing Rowley as one of them. For some reason, they had the audacity to put Trevor's name on there. In my opinion, he forced all of this suffering on the people who died and the ones who survived. There should be no way that he should be included. But what really shocked me is that I didn't see Holly or Colin's names anywhere. That probably means they're still out there. Actually, I shouldn't think about them for too long. They've caused enough suffering for me. I don't want them haunting me again. I have enough on my plate.